So hi, I'm uh, Richard Cartwright. I'm from Quantel. I'm a principal software architect and um, I'm going to be talking today about a FIMS RESTful capture service for RTP recording that we've been developing at Quantel. Uh, this talk is in two parts. First of all, uh, as part of my role with Quantel, I've been helping uh, chairing a subgroup within FIMS to add a RESTful interface to FIMS. And um, so uh, I'm going to be discussing that as part of FIMS v1.1. So I'm going to be talking about the details of the REST mapping uh, within FIMS. Um, the aim of that project, uh, where to find the mapping within the FIMS specification, uh, the resources and states of the FIMS model that stay the same between the SOAP and the REST uh, implementation. Uh, I'm going to give you an example of some uh, REST messages. Talk about the JSON support that we've added into uh, FIMS REST. Um, and give uh, an overview of the sample implementation that uh, Quantil have contributed to uh, as open source and the future work we plan to do as part of FIMS REST. The second part of the presentation will be looking at uh, the Quantel RTP recorder. Uh, where does FIMS sit uh, for Quantel uh, within its product line? Um, why fit, we believe that FIMS is just as good for uh, dealing with streams and stream-based plumbing uh, as it is for dealing with batch-based workflows um, and how we're going to be using FIMS as part of an agile production infrastructure and recording RTP streams uh, for sports highlights uh, uh, production. And um, fingers crossed, at the end of that I'll give a prototype demonstration uh, of the FIMS capture service that we've put together. So first of all, these are the words that describe what the FIMS REST subgroup uh, was tasked to do. Uh, the purpose of the project was to specify rules for the provision of FIMS services uh, that were based on the existing XSDs, on the existing SOAP-based data models, but they are in this case RESTful and use HTTP directly uh, rather than being tunneled uh, over SOAP. Um, and have uh, both an XML representation and a JSON representation. JSON is a very popular format uh, for use in REST. And the use of REST and or JSON should be complementary to and in addition to the capabilities that FIMS already had. So these were what we were uh, tasked with doing in the subgroup. And um, as part of FIMS v1.1, other presentations are talking about a new repository service and FIMS REST mapping includes a mapping for REST and the repository service. So we, we did the two pieces of work at the same time. So this is just... Uh, a diagram that shows um, the relationships between um, FIMS SOAP and FIMS REST. So we have the FIMS specifications, the Word documents, they refer to the FIMS XSDs and it's actually the FIMS XSDs that are the normative models. Uh, they are technical specification, they're inside the uh, FIMS XSDs. Um, for SOAP based services we had WSDL files to describe the SOAP operations. Um, and those SOAP messages are actions that you can do with FIMS. To do the REST mapping, what we did was we took the, exactly the same payload from the SOAP message and turned it into a, a REST message that we use the REST operations of get, post and delete uh, to use. So instead of having the SOAP message with the operation name in it, we've mapped the operation name to get, post or delete. And then we can take that message uh, which is uh, just what you would have found inside the SOAP uh, envelope and we can convert it losslessly to JSON, to a JSON format. So we now are supporting uh, JSON as well as XML by using FIMS REST. So um, by specifying a lossless translation between JSON and XML we are implicitly defining the JSON messages uh, via the same set of XSDs. So the work that the FIMS REST subgroup did was to produce the things in red, uh, a set of mapping tables uh, for how to go from the SOAP messages to REST messages, and a specification of how to go between XML and JSON. So that was the deliverable of the, the FIMS REST subgroup. The important thing was, though, that we did this once. We didn't have to do it uh, for every single service that goes forward in the future. So we just made FIMS uh, REST a first-class citizen and, and JSON a first-class citizen that, that will fit with all future FIMS services. This is the data model that you'd find in FIMS 1.07 and also in uh, FIMS 1.1. Um, it was already designed to be ready for REST. 
So what we've done with this data model is made sure that um, the, the data model uh, translates to REST. It just works. It was designed to work with REST. It already does. There's a concept of resource. The resource has an ID. We can turn that ID into a URL, and we can work with FIMS resources uh, over REST and so. There's a state model in FIMS, uh, and that state model is also exactly the same, whether you're using REST or SOAP. FIMS v1.1 added a couple of new states so that we can deal with the, uh, the fact that messages can be new and then put onto a queue before they start running. And we've improved the state model in FIMS 1.1 so we can deal with the fact that, uh, for example, you couldn't previously in the state model uh, cancel a paused job. So by nesting, by having a nested state chart diagram, we can properly, uh, uh, you know, we're properly representing the states of a, a FIMS job and the hierarchy of states in a FIMS job. So let's give some examples um, of a very simple example here of a transfer request for a FIMS transfer message. Um, in the SOAP world, we wrap that inside a SOAP envelope, um, and then we have a specified in the WSDL transfer request message. So I send a SOAP message, transfer re request message, and I get a transfer response message back. And that's the way that the SOAP uh, is uh, specified. When I turn that into REST, what I do is I just take the body of the SOAP message um, and I use POST to a URL uh, that has job in the path. So um, if I go back, it's the same body, although there's a slight difference in namespace thing, but effectively it's the same content of the message, but I'm using POST. And we've specified which methods to use for which messages. And I can represent the same POST message in a JSON format as well. So it's exactly the same information. We're using a, um, a form of XML to JSON mapping um, that means that things remain fairly human readable. There's a number of mappings out there that completely obfuscate the JSON and they look really nested and very hard to use. But in this model, we're keeping um, the XML structure and the XML namespaces in the mapping to JSON. Uh, but it's still post to a URL with a MIME type of JSON instead of a MIME type of XML. Where can you find REST in FIMS uh, v1.1? Well, you can go to the main uh, technical specification document, um, general description document, and we've defined in there what it means for a service to be RESTful, uh, FIMS REST compliant. Um, we've defined in there a, a new form for in interface versioning so that as we go forward to FIMS 1.2 and FIMS 1.3, a client and a server know if they're compatible at either end. Um, we specified what it means to do RESTful notifications. So as a service is running and it's 25% complete, 50% complete, 75% complete, uh, we can send notification messages back over REST as well as dealing with job requests and, and content messages. Um, there's a big section on what it means to be a RESTful FIM service and how to write uh, a table in a WSDL file, and that's the way we've done it. I'll show you an example in a second. Um, We've got there, uh, we've described what you need to do when you write a new FIM service to make it RESTful. And it's a very simple few steps that you need to do to add the REST mapping. And then there's a section on the JSON mapping. But all we did was take 1.07 and add these sections. We've not created a new document, we've not created something separate. REST is just, if you like, a, a late to the party, but first class citizen within the FIM specification. So where can you find REST if you actually want to find out how to do a RESTful service? If you go into the WSDL files for each of the services, whether it's for capture, repository, transfer, transform, um, if you click on the Start Here button, you'll be taken to some documentation where you'll find an HTML table. And in that HTML table, it says the name of the operation, a description, what, it, what uh, REST method do you use, for example, POST, what URI do you go to, so it might be, in this case, it's job, if I'm doing a job query, then it'll be job slash the ID of the job. Uh, what do I need to put in the body of the message? What do I get back if things are successful? What type do I get back from the XSDs if the job fails? And also any HTTP headers that I have to put in to make the, make the thing work. So, um, and that just sits in the WSDLs next to the WSDL specification. Um, and if you're going to create a, uh, a QC mapping, for FIMS as a QC, upcoming QC service, then you just add one of these tables to add, add the REST mapping. 
Similar tables for notifications. If I send a notification back from a FIMS job, asynchronous notification, then what method do I use? What's the body of the message? And in what cases do I have to uh, send that message? What, what, what operations, what actions trigger that message? And also included in the package is a uh, sample implementation. Uh, and that example, there's a readme file there that points you at some test files. And that, that, that could be the basis of, uh, of being writing your own RESTful implementation. So all of the sort of, well, I'm going to go into a bit more detail on that now. So the REST sample implementation, um, the aim was to make an extendable application framework example. It isn't a transcoder. It isn't a capture engine, but it does have a mock um, uh, a mock engine inside it, so it pretends to do a job. So if you ask it to do a capture job, in two minutes' time, you sit there and you wait, and in two minutes' time, it does the capture job, sends back the notifications, runs for a few minutes, stops, you can cancel it, you can pause it, you can do all the things you can do to a capture job over a REST interface. So it's, it's well supported for capture, transform, and transfer, uh, but only has limited repository support so far because we ran out of time, basically, but there was there is another repository uh, example implementation that we're providing. Um, it has the potential to be extended with new data models, e.g. for the upcoming QC service. Um, underneath everything, common to all services, we have supported the base data model, which is the largest part of the XSDs. Serialization and deserialization to and from XML and JSON, which could be used in a server or a client. Um, default uh, REST API mappings that are, are found in the specification documents. Common behaviors for all services, so that's the pause, restart, um, uh, cancel, fail. And also it checks both the syntax and the semantics of the messages that you're sending backwards and forwards. Um, that's useful, for example, it won't let you put a send a capture message where you say, I want you to stop this job before you've started it. It'll pick that kind of thing up. So it's testing sort of the semantic nature of the messages and could be the basis of a conformance, uh, conformance process in the future. It's an implementation written in Scala, which is a Java virtual machine language. Um, it's just what I use in my day job, but it's, uh, it's, it's getting certain traction in, in sort of for writing service uh, engines. And it's designed to be thread safe with immutable data, in other words, designed to be run on a scale out web server. You can implement your own services within it. There's a, uh, if you like, a, a trait or an interface, what Java would call an interface. You can extend the service engine trait, which has some methods on it, get resource, list resources, delete a resource, delete all, count, create a new resource, update an existing resource, or check whether a, an exhaust, uh, a resource exists or not. You implement those methods to add a new service uh, into the engine. And as I said before, it supports the, uh, the states of the actions that you can do to change state of pause, resume, restart, cancel, stop, and purge. So the FIMS REST subgroup, these are the outputs so far, the specification documents, the, the tables in the WSDL, uh, and that is now all going into review in FIMS uh, v1.1, and that review is starting from next week. Um, and the group, RESTful subgroup, will respond to any comments. Um, we have an outstanding action to complete the repository implementation in REST in the sample implementation. Um, and we'd like to finish helping the QC service and the new timecode work to define their REST mappings. But after that, the REST should be business as usual. There's no need really for the REST subgroup to exist going forward because we've made REST a core part of FIMS. Um, if we've succeeded, that's success. That's a measure of success. So what does FIMS mean for Quantel? This is the, the second part uh, of my presentation. So um, Quantel have, for a number of years, uh, been producing, over 10 years now, a, a broadcast server product called Enterprise SQ, which supports uh, SDI uh, recording and playback and editing um, using desktop uh, Windows-based applications. And we also have access to what's stored on this content over the web using HTTP using a system called QTube. Um, more recently, we've added a, uh, a software-only version of our hardware system uh, called Revolution Q. It's not quite a product yet. It will be a product by uh, IBC. Um, and as part of this, we've also added a um, RTP recorder that allows us to, rather than use SDI push and pull, we can use RTP to record streams into our environment and edit with them. 
but we're offering the same agile workflows over RTP streams. In other words, you can do sports highlight packages. You don't have to com record a complete file before you've finished. We're, recording the, we're offering those agile workflows, or the event is finished and the files are stored on disk. But you can be very close to the record head, or you can be back in time. Um, but it's an RTP stream instead of a, an SDI stream. To be able to control that recording, we've introduced a FIMS capture service onto this RTP recorder. So you can use a workflow engine, and our client is going to use uh, their own bespoke workflow engine to control our recorder over a FIMS, uh, FIMS RESTful API. Um, we're also then adding in FIMS APIs to a product that we have called FileFlow. FileFlow allows us to take camera files into our environment in a sort of batch processing mode or to push files out, MXF files out to uh, playout servers or, or other people's playout servers or to other archives. So we're going to add a transfer and a transform FIMS interface, uh, both REST and SOAP, into the FileFlow um, environment. And back of a napkin in a bar in NAB, uh, at, uh, you know, in the hotel, uh, we decided, well, we might as well just go one step further and add a cap FIMS capture service to our SDI uh, interface, because it's a relatively simple thing to do. So we will end up, uh, hopefully in a few months' time, having a capture service controlling our SDI ports on our servers. One thing we'd like to encourage the FIMS uh, greater community to do is to have a look at this QTube API that we have, which is HTTP in the clear means of getting access to media. Um, and we support things like smooth streaming and MPEG Dash as an interface between our servers and our clients. And maybe a future agile workflow based uh, support for FIMS could include this uh, level of API here, sort of HTTP pull as an additional, additional kind of FIMS service. So that's, that's future work and something that uh, we'd be keen for some users to come to the business, uh, FIMS Business Steering Committee and discuss, uh, because it's uh, something that is, we're not trying to close off here, and we'd love the industry to be, to be playing in the same, same space for professional media production. So where is Quantor going to be deploying FIMS? Well, the first initial deployment will be at a major US uh, sports uh, broadcaster. Um, and they're going to be controlling the record of up to 1,800 parallel uh, streams, uh, RTP streams, using a FIMS API. So they're going to scale, obviously that's going to scale up over a few years, but um, they are recording uh, at three different quality levels, and they also have a JPEG 2000 quality that they have the option of recording, and they're going to be controlling our recorders using their workflow engine up to 1,800 parallel streams. Um, and they want access over those HTTP pull APIs to be able to edit on those streams you know, within a second or two of them arriving. And we are, we're hoping to, to get to that point. Another place where uh, we've discussed FIMS, or Quantel have discussed FIMS, is we've been participating in the Joint Task Force for Network Media, uh, which is an EBU, VSF, and SMPTE um, activity. Um, and we think that FIMS is a suitable way of setting up the plumbing for dealing with streams uh, in an RTP world, where we're moving from SDI to IP, FIMS can actually describe the plumbing within our IP infrastructure. And I'm going to give you an example of that in a second. So we propose that as part of our JTNM uh, submission. Um, so FIMS is fit for the configuration in stream-based uh, workflows as, as well as it is for uh, doing batch-based uh, workflows over files. So let me give you an example of that. Uh, a FIMS job can describe uh, something that a journalist wants to achieve, for example, uh, some kind of actor. So they want to move a file from, from one site to another. Or they may be that it's an orchestrator. So an orchestrator is, um, is um, uh, controlling the monetization of content. So I've got this uh, material at high bit rates, are ready to broadcast, but actually I need to make the iPhone version and the iPad version and the Android version and so on. So we may have our orchestrator trying to monetize content in that way. Or we may have a policy that says, I want to keep two geographically distinct copies of every valuable piece of material that I own, which might be driven by a rules engine. All of these are the kind of activities that we might want to do. And we might want to specify that not just over files, but over streams as well. A FIMS job is a means to declare work that you want to do, independent of whether that's via file or via stream. So 
we're viewing it as a means of setting up the plumbing between our servers. So here's an example. Maybe I want to capture uh, a growing file from a camera uh, and uh, an RTP stream. And I want to store those on, onto a disk. I might also then, my rule kicks in that says I want to have a geographically distinct copy of that. So then I create another FIMS job that says, please copy uh, this file as it arrives from site A to site B. And then I might have an orchestrator saying, and I want to monetize that as soon as possible, so please do a transcode uh, from site A to site B. So I put a, a filter in the way, or that might be change the color or change the resolution. I can specify all of those activities with the FIMS jobs that we have today. So I'm 0% complete. The FIMS jobs start up as the content starts to arrive, and I start to, to capture onto this device here. And through the HTTP pull interface that I was showing you before, um, I can start to view those streams in my editing platforms. The uh, other pumps start up because as soon as the content starts to arrive here, the FIMS job starts to move content over to here to, to keep the safe copy or get ready the iPhone copy. And I've already created an edit using this file, even though it hasn't finished yet, and started to play that, that sports highlight package out to air. But it's still being controlled by a FIMS job, and the orchestrator or the actor or the rules engine are be being told how far through these jobs are in terms of completion. <coughs> So I get to 75% complete. My files are now stored at site A. I haven't quite finished at site B. And finally, 100% complete. Everything, is, uh, everything is, is done. So I'm mixing HTTP pull with RTP push uh, controlled by FIMS, stream-based workflows controlled by FIMS. So then I'm going to have a go at doing a prototype demonstration. So I'm going to run up um, the SCAMP tool that I showed you, an RTP recorder, and uh, our software stack called QStack, which is our software-only broadcast server. Um, I'm going to uh, post a BM content and read it back, uh, just to show that I have uh, limited support of the repository service uh, in our REST API. I'm going to start an RTP stream and check that it plays uh, with VLC. Uh, and then I'm going to post a request to record that RTP stream. And um, if we can, we'll follow the progress um, of that record uh, using the FIMS API. And on completion, I'll check the FIMS job, and I'll check that I've actually got files on disk. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is run up a, um, a server, a FIMS server, uh, on this all on this laptop. So I can go then to um, a, uh, a browser, um, and I can, oh, it would be nice if I could look at a job. Let's see if I can use the FIMS poster. So I can go to localhost uh, slash API slash job. I have to set the Vim FIMS version header. I can do um, a get request. I get the response back. and. Um, you can just see off the bottom there, there are no jobs because this is an empty server. I, I literally just started it. Um, what I'm going to do is post a very simple uh, BM content uh, to the server. Uh, and I've got a little script that does that. And then I can go to my poster and I can say content. Uh, get and if this would scroll, which it won't, so I should have checked that beforehand. But there, you could you should be able to see the details of the job. So that bit of the demo didn't work very well. <laughs> BM content is you can get it back. I don't know why it's not scrolling. That's um, rather annoying. But I just posted that. Now I'm going to post a FIMS job, um, a capture service job. And in this job, I'm going to ask the process to start by no wait. So that means start capturing their RTP stream now. If the RTP stream isn't there, the server fails, because it has to have a stream that's, that's, that's there and present. And I'm going to say, stop process by service defined time. And what that means here is, stop the service when the RTP stream stops. I also have modes where I can start the recording uh, by a time code that's embedded in the stream. I can start the recording by a wall clock time. 
and I can stop the recording after a certain duration or I can stop the recording at a time code or I can stop the recording um, at a wall clock time. So those are all options that are available to me. And then down here I've got a, um, a RTP address that I'm going to be recording. Uh, so that's uh, just a, uh, an RTP URL. So let's start the RTP stream. I'm using a tool called uh, Multicat, which is a, a, a sort of a good testing tool for RTP streams. So I've now started playing out an RTP stream, and if you look in the background here, VLC is watching that multicast RTP stream um, and, uh, and is ready, so therefore I know I've got a stream that's available. Then what I'm going to do is post that job that you just saw there. And the recorder has now started to make a recording. It's quite busy recording the RTP stream. Um, and if I go to my disk, I've created a, a, an ASO2 bundle, Hamware ASO2 bundle on disk. And if I go into the media folder, and if I change this to a, a view like this, um, as the recording is made, what we should get is a function. You'll see that every five seconds or so, the size of the file, yeah, I just popped up, the size of the file um, is updating. So uh, the capture is running. If I hit Control C on the um, the uh, multicast there, then uh, we see that VLC stops, uh, my recorder has stopped, the file has stopped growing, and what I was hoping to show you, so I'll, I'll have a go see if I can um, get the job. So um, I was hoping to show this in the browser, but what I just did was a FIMS GET request to get the details of that job. And um, I should see somewhere in here that it, that it finished. Let's have a look. <coughs> Resource ID status completed. So that's the job completed. And the final thing I can... delete the job and then if I try and get the job I get a FIMS fault message back because the job isn't known to that system anymore I've done a cleanup so that was a, uh, a demonstration of um, Quantel's uh, approach to recording uh, RTP streams using FIMS RESTful um, interfaces and we're hoping to have that as a product by um, IBC so it's a prototype at the moment but should be product and deployed at scale uh, by September. Thank you very much. Yeah.